Hello, and welcome back. I hope you had a meaningful network break. Now, I'd like to invite you to a virtual journey through the Republic of Ireland. Join the Irish Food Board, Board Beer's presentation to discover their proud national traditions and livestock farming. Find out what it makes to take Irish meat to the next level. And, you know, globally trusted. From the fortuitous island locations to their national sustainability program, Origin Green, I think you should really enjoy the next presentation by Malcolm. Thank you so much. All over the world, people enjoy sharing the food and drink that they love. And more and more, they're also taking an interest in the stories of where it all comes from and how it's produced. Here on the island of Ireland, right on the edge of Europe, we're fully invested in every aspect of our delicious food and drink. And we want to tell the world about it all. Hey, Niu Niu. Each story starts in the very same way, with a perfect combination of our natural environment and how we work in harmony with it. The plentiful rain that nourishes Ireland's lush grasslands and bountiful fields of crops makes them perfect for livestock to graze on and for produce, plants and cereals to grow in. Our wild Atlantic coastline brings in gusts of fresh, clean air and provides us with cold, clear ocean waters to fish in. It's from natural beginnings like these that we look to share our produce with the world to be enjoyed wherever people love good food. Our families and communities rise each day with a purpose. To farm, to fish and to produce with the same care, commitment and respect for tradition that they have done for generations. It will be 30 days before they'll come back on that pasture. And through their membership of Ireland's leading edge national food sustainability programme, Origin Green, their work is measured and independently audited to drive continuous improvements in areas such as food safety, traceability, animal health and welfare, environmental protection and production processes, in order to produce food that's both kinder to our planet and to its people. <laughs> Tasty natural food for today and for tomorrow. So if you've ever wondered what's behind our food or drink from Ireland, now you know, a place where we work in harmony with nature, like nowhere else in the world. Hello and welcome to the Irish Pavilion at the FHG Match Meet Digital Trade Show. My name is Malcolm and I'm here to share with you about sourcing sustainable meat from Ireland, a place where we work in harmony with nature like nowhere else in the world. The Irish Pavilion and this webinar are brought to you by Board Beer, the Irish Food Board, which is a government agency of the Republic of Ireland. Board Beer connects buyers around the world with Irish food and drink producers, and we are committed to bringing the taste of quality Irish beef, pork, poultry and lamb to tables worldwide. The Republic of Ireland is a European Union member state located on an island on the edge of Europe. Across the sea to the east is the United Kingdom, and to the south are France and Spain. To the west stretches the Great Atlantic Ocean, all the way to Canada and the United States. Ireland's island location provides the perfect conditions for raising high quality livestock. In fact, Ireland produces enough food every year to feed 25 million people, about the size of Australia and five times its own population of 5 million. Irish meat is globally recognized today and is exported to over 80 countries across Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. In fact, Ireland's global meat exports were valued at over 3.7 billion euros in 2020. So what makes Irish meat special? To find out, with me here today is Joe Burke, Board Beer's Director of Meat and Livestock, with some first-hand insights straight from the Irish countryside. Good day to you, Joe. 
and welcome to the program. So tell us, how does Ireland's geographic location contribute to its long-standing tradition of meat production? So Ireland has a very temperate climate, Malcolm, and we get regular rainfall throughout the year. Um, but we have very temperate climate, so we don't get a very hot summer, but we get quite mild temperatures during the winter also. So that makes it an ideal country to grow grass um, for certain sectors, for beef and lamb, for example. Um, but uh, we also have a very unspoiled landscape and uh, that uh, we have a very small human population in comparison to the number of animals and the volume of meat that we produce. So we have very clean air uh, and very clean water as well for our production systems. So that gives us a, a large surplus of meat anyway from our production to be available to export. Thanks, Joe. We have been hearing a lot about Origin Green on this program. Could you tell us what is Origin Green and how does it ensure safety and sustainability throughout the Irish meat supply chain? Origin Green is our national sustainability program that we have in Ireland. Um, so it, it encompasses primary producers as well as food businesses and government agencies. Um, and how it works is that each operator, including the farm businesses, but uh, companies also, um, will develop their own sustainability plan in which they have to make commitments um, which are measured. Um, so that includes things such as reduction of water use, uh, packaging, um, and even fuel, for example, in the case of businesses. But also as part of our quality assurance programs, we're auditing the farms, um, the individual producers on a regular basis, at least every 18 months. And that means that, you know, we're monitoring everything with regard to um, the environment, but also food safety and security. Um, so those things are, are very closely monitored. Final question for you, Joe. How does the new grass-fed standard for Irish beef make it unique? The grass-fed standard for Irish beef um, is an example of an innovation that we have seen in the last uh, year, really, Malcolm. Um, it was introduced um, last year in 2020 in order to verify and provide a proof point. We have always known that the vast majority of the feed that is used in our beef production system uh, is grass. It comes from grass, either grazed grass or ensiled grass during the winter time. But this is just to be able to prove that um, specifically and to follow the animal throughout its lifetime uh, on the farm and to verify the feed used in its production system. Um, so it's a, an internationally recognized verification and, and, and a certification system, um, which it will be allow, able to uh, allow us to uh, provide more evidence really to customers, to buyers, um, and to use that information then um, in our communication, uh, in, including in overseas markets. Um, so, you know, really what it has shown, Malcolm, is that 95% actually of the feed that the animals eat during their lifetime is grass. Um, and in order to secure um, the, the board be a verified grass-fed logo, um, they have to be consuming a minimum of 90%. And we have found that the vast, or that the majority anyway, certainly of Irish animals um, will meet this standard. So that's what makes Irish meat production unique. But don't take the Irish food board's word for it. We are Ireland's national food and drink marketing agency after all. So why don't we hear now from someone in Ireland who actually lives this day to day? I'm happy to invite you now on a virtual tour of a real Irish farm. Let's join Clive Wichema and see where the magic really happens. Welcome to the Bottomer Family Farm. We're farming near Clannacilty in West Cork. We are beef farmers and we have a grass-based system. So our cattle predominantly graze outside and we're looking to get as much grass as we can into their diet. We buy cattle from local farmers and they stay here for approximately six months before we sell them. So if you'd like to follow me, we'll go and see the first bunch of cattle. So these heifers were bought in early June, uh, weighing around 370 kgs and we're hoping to sell them in about a month's time with a carcass weight of around 250 kgs. 
So that's what our processor is looking for, and it really works well with our grass-based system, where we can get a really economic finish for us, but also a really good quality product. So behind us is a plantation of native Irish trees that we've planted as part of the GLASS scheme. So the GLASS scheme is a scheme which encourages farmers to farm in a way which is more sympathetic to nature and to the environment. So the native trees are very obviously sequestering carbon and they are providing habitats for birds, insects and animals. As you can see, around Ireland, all of our fields are surrounded by hedgerows. So these hedgerows are great habitats, they're great nesting sites for birds and sources of food and shelter for all sorts of animals, including our cattle when the weather isn't so nice. So here we are in one of our grazing fields. Our grass starts growing sometime in January and we will get grass growth right around until the start of December. What that allows us to do is to keep our cattle at grass for the vast majority of the year. So it naturally follows on that managing that grass is a, an extremely important part of our business. It's not just the quantity of grass, but we really want to feed an, a really good quality of grass. So that means feeding grass when it's young and leafy, when it has the maximum nutrient availability to the animal. To achieve that, what we do is we rotate our cattle around the grazing area. Part of our grazing management is the incorporation of clover with our grass. So it's not just grass, it's grass and clover. The clover has not only a really high nutrient content, but it also fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere straight into the soil where the grass can utilize it. That reduces our fertilizer bill, it's economically benefit, but it also has a huge effect, positive effect on the sustainability of our farm. So working alongside the clover, we spread our slurry using a trailing shoe. And what the trailing shoe does is it gets the nutrients straight into the soil. So it increases the efficiency of how they're used and it improves the sustainability of the farm. All of this really improves our performance in the Board BIA Sustainable Beef and Lamb Assurance Scheme. And that's how we as farmers play our part in Origin Green. So come on now and we'll go and look at the next bunch of cattle. This bunch is much closer to finish and will be sold in a couple of weeks. These are all Angus and Hereford. We really like the Angus and Hereford because, again, they're just so easy to finish off grass. And also, the beef that they produce is really well marbled, excellent eating quality, and that's what's in demand in the premium markets. So that concludes our farm tour. I really hope that you enjoyed it, you found it interesting, I really enjoyed showing you around. Hopefully in 2021 you can make it here in person, um, but that's all from us for now. Thank you very much. Thank you Clive for welcoming us onto your farm and telling us about the unique production system that distinguishes grass-fed Irish beef from its grain-fed competitors. In fact, grassland accounts for 80% of Ireland's land area, and these grasslands support 6.7 million livestock on 130,000 family-run farms, much like Clive's. So that's the Irish meat advantage. Fresh air, rich soil, abundant rainfall, producing natural grass growth, sustaining livestock on family farms throughout an island on the western edge of Europe. Once international travel resumes, we'd be very happy to welcome you in person in Ireland to witness the Irish meat advantage for yourself. But for now, let's turn back to the Asian markets and to my colleague Declan Fennell, Board Beer's Director of EU Co-Funded Promotions, and ask him about what he's seeing in the local response to the Irish meat advantage. Could you share with us, Declan? What opportunities do you anticipate for local buyers sourcing sustainable meat from Ireland? I suppose firstly is um, the, the region of Southeast Asia is, is significant and very important to us. Um, it accounts for almost 12% of our total exports. Um, and if, if I were to look in terms of a market like the, um, the Philippines, it's our number one largest international export market for beef. Um, so outside of the EU, it's the number one market export and about 20,000 tonnes of beef. 
that has happened since 2014 so when we secured our market access and I suppose the real sort of interest in Irish beef is and I know Joe spoke about um, I suppose the, the proposition how we produce in terms of grass fed but I suppose the real the real evidence in terms of what they, they want is they're looking for a trusted partner trusted partner in terms of capabilities consistency of supply but I suppose the key ingredient really is um, I suppose it's the guarantee of a, a, a product which has integrity from a food safety point of view but also from a point of view of um, you know taste is a huge factor the, the proposition of our grass-fed beef uh, to taste it is a point of difference uh, versus um, other competing um, I suppose exporters which are promoting more grain fed into the market um, if I look from the poor point of view um, and we talk about the biggest thing and the biggest sort of disruptive factor we've seen over the last 18 months uh, globally is African swine fever. And I suppose it's really has sort of, um, I suppose, challenged major producers and indeed imports of the pork, which, is, you know, Southeast Asia is a very, very important region. I think one in every two tons of Irish pork is exported into that region. I suppose from an Ireland, Ireland perspective is, um, thankfully we have no African swine fever. And I suppose one unique feature that we have is, is that this island status, we have 900 miles of this coastal protection. So that has given us a huge sort of, um, I suppose, trust factor in terms of our island status. And I think buyers recognize that where they're looking for, um, I suppose, security, a supply um, and, a, and, a, and a good ingredient, which is backed up by system controls, be it on the food safety and also on sustainability. Thanks, Declan. You're head of the EU co-funded promotional campaigns. Tell us more about them and what they can do for Asian meat buyers. Yes, Malcolm. Um, in 2019, Ireland um, and indeed Borbia, we secured a, tri a, tr um, a 3.8 million uh, three-year uh, funding from the European Union. And uh, the purpose of which is to promote uh, European Irish pork and beef across a number of key markets within Southeast Asia. Um, they included Vietnam, South Korea and the Philippines. And I suppose the, the objective was very sort of simple and straightforward really. I suppose a number of things is one is to build and strengthen awareness of Europe's high standards in areas of food safety and also sustainability. Um, secondly, it was about I suppose building a positive image around um, Europe and indeed Ireland and Irish exporters in both pork and beef as a trusted partner. And then and finally is, um, and this is really sort of pinpointing our target audience of importers, distributors, uh, and obviously um, within the media circle of key opinion leaders is, I suppose, to increase the propensity to purchase um, Irish pork and beef. So it's an exciting project. It's a significant investment, uh, 3.8 million uh, over the three years. And I suppose it's a real vote of confidence from the European Union um, and the trust they put into Borbia to implement this level of campaign. And uh, I suppose to be us, for, for Ireland to be the flagship, to be promoting our pork and beef within, within that region. One last question for you, Declan. What promotional activities can buyers across the Asia region participate in to learn more about sourcing Irish meat? This is a good question. And, and one thing we were doing is, um, I suppose, recognizing where we are in present moment with COVID-19. Um, economies, when COVID-19 passes, the economies will reboot. And uh, when those economies reboot, we'll certainly see a, certainly a strong growth in terms of the area of food service. Um, we're very mindful and, and in fact, the last month has been quite a busy month where we've had a lot of activities, promotion activities in the markets, um, most of which have been um, online through sort of technical seminars, uh, virtual hybrid events. But I suppose the, the big promising thing, uh, Malcolm, is, is that we've had a number of initiatives, for example, in Vietnam. Um, over the last fortnight, we ran culinary um, food inspiration uh, visits to culinary schools and I suppose the whole objective is about to present um, Irish pork to Vietnamese culinary students to explain I suppose number one the product proposition talk about the, the versatility of, of pork and indeed Irish European pork and also to sort of give them a, a sort of an appetite on what Ireland is capable of doing we're very hopeful and confident that we can secure market access for Irish beef 
into a market like Vietnam. And I suppose that's the real opportunity that we see in terms of securing um, access into Vietnam for beef. We're, we're seeing a strong appetite and interest in, in, in um, Irish, Irish beef. Um, on a positive front, um, only last month, we were in um, FoodEx in Japan, which was a real trade show, which is brilliant. Um, next month, we're in Annual Foods, which is Shenzhen again, a real event where, where buyers, and we all want to get back into the room where we can see the whites of the eyes and, and meet people in person. Uh, and Seal is happening in, in, in May, and that's in Shanghai. Um, so there's a lot of activity planned, and I've sort of summarized them and say um, the virtual events or online events are from information sharing, what's happening in terms of global supply and demand, from point of reaching out to, I suppose, the practitioners are using uh, pork and beef, working with culinary schools, and then obviously in-person events where we, we can go to trade shows. There is a, a list of trade shows scheduled for the region, whether it's Buffex, Food and Hotel Vietnam, um, and, and hopefully, and fingers crossed, those events will happen this year. Thanks, Declan, for sharing your insights on the Asian market's reception to sourcing sustainable meat from Ireland and about how buyers in the region can harness the EU co-funded campaigns to learn more about the Irish meat advantage. Now for the final segment of our webinar, I'd like to introduce four Irish meat companies who are already actively supplying to Asian markets. These are ABP Food Group, AgroKeypack International, Don Meats, and Silverhill Duck. I'll let them introduce themselves. Every day, from farm to fork, we keep our promise to deliver world-class, premium quality food products to our customers around the world. We set standards in everything we do, from the production of fresh and frozen meat products to pet foods, proteins, and renewable energy. We are ABP Food Group. We are an international food group with four divisions. Our success comes from a handful of key ingredients. First of these, is the one gifted to us, our climate. Thanks to our mild temperatures and geographical location, we have the ideal conditions for natural grass production. We call this our grass advantage. It's not just our lush pasture land that makes our beef and lamb products so succulent and tender. We work with selected farmers whose expertise is handed down from generation to generation. We are guided by world-renowned doctors of animal science to ensure a stress-free environment for our livestock. Getting the best from these premium ingredients requires the very best equipment, technology and know-how. At ABP, we've developed a patented process called Ultra Tender, which ensures our meat is tender and consistent. We've also invested in the most modern and efficient food processing facilities in Europe. Processing excellence and efficiency are cornerstones of our business. Our renewables division produces sustainable fuel, which abates more carbon than our total group emissions. We create biodiesel from tallow and used cooking oil and convert waste food into biogas. We operate in one of the most competitive markets in the world and our customers demand the best in terms of quality and price. These include major multiples, food service and manufacturing customers across the world, alongside many international Michelin star establishments. From farm to fork, we will continue to set standards across our business. We will build on our reputation for excellence, and we will dedicate ourselves to our customers worldwide. We 
our ABP Food Group. Here in Ireland, among the lakes, forests and farmlands of County Monaghan, Silver Hill Duck have been producing premium quality duck since 1962. With so many years of research and husbandry, we have carefully developed the exclusive and unique breed, the Silver Hill Duck. Renowned for its full flavour, our duck is succulent, 
tender and consistent in its quality. That consistency is our distinction of pride, and every aspect of the process from breeding, egg production, hatching, selection, processing and packaging is precisely monitored to ensure our excellent standards are maintained. Control over every aspect of the production process enables full traceability from the laying farms to the hatchery, and even the feed is 100% natural. Product quality and food safety is our priority at Silver Hill Duck. This integrity is the cornerstone of our business and demonstrates to our customers our ability to deliver consistent, traceable, award-winning duck products to a global market. Our quality management and food safety standards in all operations within the company have been accredited to the Global Food Safety Initiative by BRC certification. The company was awarded an AA grade for its quality management system, which is a reflection on our robust traceability, supply chain and food safety systems. Silver Hill have been proud suppliers of Head on Duck to the very best Chinese and Asian restaurants in London for almost 40 years. We are widely known as the supplier of choice for the traditional roast duck that you see hanging in almost every restaurant window in Chinatown. It's for this reason that it's known as the mother of all duck by those who use it regularly. In recent years, we've become a major supplier to markets like Singapore and Hong Kong, and we're exporting to more than 24 countries worldwide. And as home cooking has increased in popularity, Silver Hill now supply over 800 Irish and UK supermarket outlets daily with our wide range of fresh and convenient duck products. These award-winning products are easily accessible for the consumer and can be found on dinner tables around the country. Our unique duck is the best feathered duck in the world and produces a pure white down with incomparable insulation qualities. The world-class superiority of our down ensures all our duvet and pillow products create a special sleeping experience for our customers. We use state-of-the-art machinery and processes to ensure we produce the finest down quality for your comfort every night. And this is why our hand-stitched pillows and duvets are the preferred choice of five-star hotels worldwide. Our new center of excellence has allowed us to meet growing demand at home and abroad and make significant investment in expanding our workforce. The growth in our business means we now employ more than 250 people here in Ireland with plans for a new production plant which will allow us to expand into further export markets. Innovation is the key to our success and we have a dynamic team with forward-thinking management that are committed to the continued prosperity of Silver Hill. As a gold member of Board Bia's Origin Green Scheme, Silver Hill has been part of the journey to sustainability, successfully exceeding all sustainability targets set. Silver Hill duckweed is the most carbon efficient in Europe, with a carbon footprint of three kilos of carbon, less than one seventh the footprint of beef or lamb. At Silver Hill, we're committed to our customers, supplying world-class duck and a range of duck products that is consistent, traceable, and full of flavor. And that's what makes Silver Hill Duck the best duck in the world. It's been a pleasure talking to you today about sourcing sustainable meat from Ireland, a place where we work in harmony with nature like nowhere else in the world. Now that you've discovered the Irish meat advantage and learned about four of Ireland's best meat producers, I hope you go ahead and set up meetings with ABP Food Group, AgriKeeper International, Don Meats, and Silver Hill Duck on the platform and start harnessing the Irish meat advantage for yourself today. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you, Malcolm. Much appreciated. Uh, I hope the audience enjoyed a look behind the scenes as much as I did and seeing Ireland as green as it is from Singapore certainly is a joy to watch. So uh, good afternoon to you, Malcolm. Let me unmute you. Oh, wonderful. Great. We have a couple of questions that came in and um, I am going to ask you uh, the first one about Ireland's um, effect or is it affected by Brexit? So will Ireland, 
Thailand's food and drink export to Asia be affected by the Brexit? What do you think? Well, good afternoon to you, Carl, and thanks for having us. And it's great to see, I know, uh, some green fields, uh, a change from the urban jungle that we have here in Singapore. I, ho I hope that uh, satisfies the wanderlust for some of, of our viewers here today. And uh, yes, this is a question about Brexit that we get a lot out here and one that I'm very happy to clarify this afternoon. Uh, the Republic of Ireland is a separate country from the United Kingdom, and uh, we will remain in the European Union, so we're not directly affected by Brexit per se. But that being said, uh, the UK accounts for about one third of our food and drink exports, uh, while the EU and Asia each account for about another third. So as you can imagine, we have been actively diversifying our export markets since the Brexit referendum took place in 2016, and uh, redoubling our efforts now that Britain has left the European Union at the end of last year. So uh, in particular, what we have been doing on uh, the Irish production side is we have been expanding the overall value and the share of our exports destined for high growth, high potential priority markets, especially those out here in Asia. And uh, also the rapid emergence of a few key Asian trading partners from uh, the COVID lockdowns and the relative lack of disruption at the macro level for these countries have just been very encouraging for Ireland uh, in the last few months. And we're happy to report that the value of our food and drink exports to Asia increased 14% to 1.4 billion euros in the past five years. So I guess what this means for uh, our viewers here today is that uh, Irish producers will be very enthusiastic to diversify their markets and they'll be very happy to create new business relationships and uh, to meet our uh, old business partners in the region as well. And uh, the FHA match, I would say, is an excellent platform for us to do that today. Great. Um, I, let me just uh, follow up on this then. Um, since Asia has been growing so significantly, despite uh, COVID and despite Brexit, which is really uh, some, something unusual, um, which markets are you looking into to expand um, Irish products in general? Is it only Singapore or do you also look at other ones? Uh, well, for me, uh, we have a priority markets uh, that we have lined up, Singapore being one of them. Uh, but uh, wherever there's opportunity, and Ireland doesn't only supply meat, it supplies a lot of other uh, products as well in food and drink. We're very happy to explore. And uh, as I know, a lot of uh, our viewers here today have a regional or, and some even a global footprint. And we'd be very happy to meet with those guys here today. Okay. Um, so tell us a bit more. I saw there were lot, lots of lush grasslands and uh, a certain particular a grass-fed production system that was highlighted. Uh, can you tell us a tiny bit more about that? Because I think that's really important just to get the standards out there and, and just make sure that production quality is really uh, adhered. Yes, absolutely, Carl. Uh, just to draw a distinction, you know, we grew up uh, in, in kindergarten and primary school thinking that, oh, the cows eat the green grass and give the white milk. Uh, actually, not all cows in the world eat the green grass, to be honest. Um, some of them are fed grains and corn and a synthetic diet. So uh, there are merits to that system. But uh, over here in Ireland, we prefer our grass-based production system, both for our dairy and for our beef production. So a recently research conducted by the global consulting firm, EY, uh, indicated an emerging trend among consumers for sustainable beef and grass-fed cattle production worldwide. So the research shows a growing preference among uh, these grass-fed production uh, for consumers and consumers uh, because they believe that grass-fed cattle lead more natural lives in the great outdoors and uh, they are more likely to enjoy better animal welfare standards. So uh, in this survey, about 54% of consumers globally said that grass-fed would influence their choice of beef and 50% uh, said the same for dairy products. So that is very interesting. Uh, you would know that uh, the bulk of, of uh, meat produced, say, in Asia would come from South America where uh, some of it is grass-fed, some of, of it not. In North America, I'm told that most of it is a synthetic feed. But over in Ireland, uh, we have recently launched the grass-fed standard for beef, uh, which includes very stringent requirements. And some of them are, uh, one, animals must have resided on farms, which are members of the Sustainable Beef and Lamb Assurance Scheme, uh, which if you recall earlier, Clive on the farm tour, he mentioned uh, as blast, which is this scheme uh, for the production of beef and lamb. Uh, and that's just the first criterion. Uh, a second one would be at least 90% of the feed consumed by these animals on a fresh weight basis uh, must be grass or grass forage. And uh, or third, these animals must have been at pasture for a minimum of the national average of 220 days per year. Uh, the rest of it would be winter and it wouldn't be allowed out anyway, uh, but they would still be fed a grass-based diet. 
uh, during their lifetime. So uh, as you can see, and as we have discussed in the video, uh, it's quite stringent requirements for these grass-fed standards. And uh, Ireland is very well suited to grass and beef to begin with because of our temperate climate, our rich soil, and the abundant rainfall that we get uh, out on the edge of Europe. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I mean, in general, I would uh, also encourage everybody that is on the platform at the moment just to reach out to the Irish um, exhibitors. Uh, I'm sure um, you can improve your English on the one hand side and equally learn something about meat on the other. So, um, but Malcolm, just to just to go back to your initial point, uh, besides meat, uh, what other products would you recommend from Ireland that, that uh, are enough? Oh, well, Cara, uh, we might be here all day answering this question, but uh, I'll just give a brief summary. Uh, actually, our number one food and drink export is dairy. It's not meat, so uh, you might have to come back to the FHA Match Dairy Series next month to find out more about that. But let me just give you a little sampler right now. Um, for dairy, our main uh, product would actually be powdered milk, uh, various types of powdered milk going into manufacturing, such as skimmer powder, fat milk powder, whey powder, and so on. But we also supply dairy products, which would be more of interest to our audience here today into the food service channel and also into the retail channel, which include uh, products like cheese, various types of cheese, mozzarella, cheddar, uh, butter, which uh, I'm told is the number one imported butter in North America right now, uh, and uh, cream. So if you'd like to find out more, please uh, dial back in next month uh, where we have the FHA Match Dairy Series. Uh, in addition to meat and dairy, we also export a lot of high quality seafood which happens to be our third largest export sector after meat. So uh, as we mentioned in the video earlier, uh, being uh, an island nation with a 7,500 kilometer long coastline right on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, we produce a wide range of uh, good quality seafood, uh, which is available out in the markets, live, chilled, frozen. Uh, these include species like oysters, mussels, crab, whelk, scallop, abalone, shrimp, langoustines, lobsters, salmon, mackerel and even seaweed. So Ireland has a lot to offer in terms of food and drink. Uh, not everything is grass fed, I, I, I have to admit, but uh, all of it is produced with the same care and uh, a focus on sustainability and, and, and product quality uh, as our beef and our dairy products. Oh, wonderful, great. So I would uh, then thank you for your presentation and also the insights that we got, got given by the farmers themselves, which was really great. Um, the dial in. Um, and I would, yeah, just uh, basically um, move everybody to your to your booth, I hope uh, that they can enjoy a bit more conversation on um, on the actual products themselves with the producers. So thank you very much, Malcolm, from Bold Thanks, Beer. And, uh, I would like to, um, yeah, basically uh, invite you for the next segment soon. Thank you so much. See you, everyone. See you on the pavilion. Bye bye.